yes or no. And I remind you, you know now from the beginning, this is the food chart recommended by Dr. Lester Morrison, beginning about 1948 to his patients in Los Angeles and avocados, despite living in California, what a sacrifice for these people, were recommended to be off the menu. Uh, Dr. Ornish on his website says, and I quote, our research validates that a diet with 10% or fewer calories from fat is ideal. A cup of avocado has 21 grams of fat. More recently, the guidelines around nuts and seeds have changed in Ornish lifestyle medicine. New research is showing a relationship between the consumption of limited nuts and seeds in cardiovascular health. Nuts and seeds are rich in plant protein, 10 to 25%, and fiber, as well as minerals like calcium, magnesium, potassium, plus many other vitamins and bioactive compounds. And again, we'd certainly stress ground flaxseed for the lignans that we just talked about. So science does change and important uh, new data comes along that causes us to reevaluate, but avocados were still listed as off the diet. Are there any new data that take us from the no avocado to the maybe avocado. And again, just published was the first large study of avocado consumption, the risk of cardiovascular disease in US adults. This again is from the famous Harvard School of Public Health Research Database. 68,000 plus women from the Nurses Health Study, 41,000 plus men from the Harvard Professional Follow-Up Study, uh, more than 30 years, free at baseline to the questions, do you have cancer, heart disease, or stroke? They had data on who ate what, and every four years, they reassessed the data. Some people ate more than two servings of avocados a week. What did they find over the long-term follow-up? A 16% lower risk of cardiovascular disease, a 21% lower risk of coronary heart disease. And it's important to point out these studies adjust for multiple variables. They adjust for smoking. They adjust for diabetes, high blood pressure, body weight, cholesterol levels, and other habits. So they can isolate as well as any epidemiologic studies from a database can. The impact of just one measurement, in this case, avocado intake more than two servings a week versus those that had less on outcome such as coronary disease. Again, what the Harvard School of Public Health does so well, replacing half a serving a day of margarine, butter, egg, yogurt, cheese, or processed meats with the equivalent amount of avocado was associated with a 16 to 22% lower risk of cardiovascular disease. Higher avocado intake was associated with a lower risk of cardiovascular disease and coronary heart disease in two large prospective cohorts of US men and women profoundly important data that made headlines everywhere in the last few weeks. It isn't the only data out there. For example, if you look at this study in 2018, avocado consumption and risk factors for heart disease, a systematic review and meta-analysis, look what happens to triglycerides in those that eat avocados, it drops. What happens to HDL? It, it raises. What happens to total and LDL cholesterol? They drop with avocados. Despite perhaps 15% of the calories coming from plant-based saturated fat and the rest coming from largely monounsaturated fat, people uh, don't appreciate how rich avocados are in plant sterols, which help lower cholesterol, natural plant sterols uh, as well, like cyt cytosterol, as well as the amount of fiber that's present in avocados. So it's up to you to consider and talk to your doctors and your health team, whether the new Harvard School of Public Health data in the last few weeks impacts avocados, yes or no. All right, shifting again, we're bringing you data that's the most up-to-date you're gonna find. GBD, what's GBD? The Global Burden of Disease Study, a study funded by the Gates Foundation beginning 20 years ago, looking at tens of millions of people in 190 countries 3,000 plus researchers looking at all kinds of associations between diet and environment and various diseases. In fact, we can say for certain that cardiovascular disease is the number one cause of death worldwide because the Global Burden of Disease Study has studied that worldwide. We can also know for certain that hypertension is actually the single number one biggest cause of death in the world because the Global Burden and Disease Study looked at that. But they recently published in the last six to eight weeks, 
an analysis of foods for longevity based on a meta-analysis and data from the Global Burden of Disease Study. Although just published, they use 2019 data. We use life table methodology to estimate how changes were sustained in the intake of fruits, vegetables, whole grains, refined grains, nuts, legumes, fish, eggs, milk, dairy, red meat, processed meat, and sugar-sweetened beverages had on life expectancy, L-E, life expectancy, a nutrient by nutrient by nutrient. A sustained dietary change may give substantial health gains for people of all ages, both for optimized and feasible changes. Gains are predicted to be larger in the earlier the dietary change is our initiative. I want to read that last sentence. What if you learn from this study that nuts are healthy? Gains are predicted to be larger the earlier the dietary changes are initiated in life. So if you're 86 years old and watching this, God bless you. You can make changes right now. If you're 16 and watching this, you're lucky because you're learning a lot of stuff that can help you make changes and it's going to be even more impactful. But never give up. Age is not a reason not to try and not to benefit. So what did they learn in the Global Burden of Disease study? The largest life expectancy gains would be by eating more legumes, beans, peas, lentils, legumes, legumes. How many times? The blue zones, legumes, the Mediterranean diet, legumes. Both arms of the Cordioprev study, legumes. Other data looking at the food groups most associated with longevity in the elderly, legumes. But here we see it again, global burden of disease study. Number two would be adding more whole grains, not refined processed bagels and donuts, whole grains, 100% whole wheat bread, brown rice, 100% uh, whole wheat pasta and similar whole grains. Uh, and finally, the third life expectancy food was nuts. We see it again. It's a blue zone tradition, a Loma Linda tradition. Um, lots of data about uh, nuts and endothelial function, uh, nuts and lowering cholesterol, nuts and brain function. I love walnuts for their omega-3 content because we struggle to get enough omega-3 in our plant-based diet. Which two food groups did the Global Burden Disease Study find had the greatest decrease in life expectancy? our friends, red meat and processed meat. And they robbed people of years of life on this modeling predictive study. So we don't need more and more confirmation, but when studies come out like this, it's nice to see legumes, whole grains and nuts. And in fact, it's very busy, but if you look to the left optimal diet and you look at the first three things that are most impactful at extending LE life expectancy, Legumes, number one, whole grains, number two, and nuts, number three. And the next two, along with sugar and refined grains, drop life expectancy. Thank you, Global Burden of Disease Study. And the last research I want to point out to you just got published April 1, 2022, about eggs and mortality. And boy, is this a fight back and forth and back and forth uh, for a variety of reasons. It's difficult research. Our uh, gut microbiome differs, our genetics differ, and funding issues are prominent. Eating eggs increases the risk of dying from heart disease. In a publication called Associations of Dietary Cholesterol, Serum Cholesterol, and Egg Consumption with Overall and Cause-Specific Mortality, and a Systematic Review and Update Meta-Analysis. Very, very respected journal called Circulation. Bullet point number two, researchers compared egg and cholesterol consumption and blood cholesterol levels with death from cardiovascular disease in over 27,000 participants and conducted a systematic review of existing research. Eating one egg per day significantly increased the risk of dying from coronary heart disease, higher blood cholesterol levels, and higher intakes of dietary cholesterol were also associated with an elevated risk of death from heart disease. These findings support limiting dietary cholesterol intake for improved heart health. Pretty powerful data. Of course, it's database, association, observation data, but it's still powerful and it just is hitting the news. Although it didn't make as many headlines as the avocado data. Everybody loves the avocado, but people... Don't want to hear the news, apparently, that eggs and mortality may be linked. So what did the wise Benjamin Franklin say? Change is the only constant in life. One's ability to adapt to those changes will determine your success in life. <laughs>